Dawson. Appreciate that very, very much. Thank you. Well, it's been a good day, Hank. Lord's blessed in many ways and beautiful day outside. I heard on the news this evening that the, the smoke was so thick across middle Georgia they're picking it up on the satellites from out of space. Oh, wow. So if you've got breathing problems, be aware of that. In your Bibles tonight, if you would please, to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Now this is going to sound familiar to you because we were here February the 10th when I dealt with the... Uh, I told you some things I wanted to preach on some subjects the Lord dealt my heart with about about things that affect us in our daily lives. On February the 12th, I preached about the stress in Paul's life. Now, I want to go back tonight to that same scripture because there's two great lessons that I see here in this scripture with the help of the Holy Spirit. Tonight, I want to deal with the subject of dealing with disappointment dealing with disappointment. We have looked in this series about dealing with uh, the stress in Paul's life. We've studied dealing about dealing with depression, dealing with death, dealing with guilt. And there's a few more other subjects that I want to speak on if the Lord being my helper and the Holy Spirit guiding my study and my thought that way. The difference between depression and disappointment is this. A depression is a sinking down, and it is an inward sinking. If you are battling depression, I'll guarantee you your thoughts have turned inward. I'm not being treated right. I'm not being thought of right. I'm not being respected. I'm not being listened to. I'm not this. I'm not that. I'm not that. This or that. And in my years of counseling, and one of my professors in college, Dr. J. Adams, taught us in biblical counseling that to listen to what people say and when their thoughts are all self-centered, 99% of the time they are battling depression. Mm -hmm. Yep. Also, if I can find a quote here, I remember reading something from uh, John Maxwell and wrote it down. I don't know if I can find it again. I write a lot of stuff in the fly leaf of my Bible so I can refer to it. But then sometimes I have trouble remembering what Bible I wrote it in. I study from two or three different Bibles. Uh, if I don't find it, you'll be none the worse off. If I do find it, maybe you'll be helped. All right, here it is. It said, any time a person's response is larger than the issue at hand, the response is almost always about something else. Let me read that again. Any time a person's response is larger than the issue at hand, the response is almost always about something else. You ever heard the expression, well, somebody just overreacts? If they usually do, the react overreaction is not about the issue at hand, it's about something else. But in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 tonight, I want to look at this problem of disappointment. Webster's Dictionary says disappointment is defeat or failure of an expectation, hope, wish, desire, or intention. It goes on to say that it is the miscarriage of plan or design. And I thought it uh, a little unusual that he would use the word miscarriage. And I'll tell you why. I'm going to be very careful and very thoughtful. I've, I've experienced it, not per, obviously not personally what I'm going to say, but, but I've had a child that was miscarried. I didn't. Debbie did. And I know that is probably one of the most disappointing things that can happen in a couple's life. Very few families are untouched by that. Very few. Um, I know the lady that y'all heard speak. I know her, I know her husband. I knew this years ago. I talked with Brother Wilkerson when his son 
passed away unexpectedly because we shared then in something that was that was uh, co-equal there or at least camaraderie there uh, but I know they have experienced that many times you probably the ladies probably heard her mention that so I thought it unusual that Webster would use that kind of language and so it fits though would you think about it now in your Bible tonight in the book of 2 Corinthians I want to say 1 Corinthians so bad I don't know what to do <laughs> 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7, it said, At least I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations. There was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me. At least I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord Christ, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest on me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions and distresses for Christ's sake. For when I'm weak, then I'm strong. I become a fool in glory. You have compelled me, for I ought to have commended, or I ought to have been commended out of you, for In nothing am I behind the very chiefest apostles, though I be nothing. And so we see in this scripture, and I use this same scripture when I talk about the stress in Paul's life. Because all of those things mentioned there are things that will and do, without a doubt, add stress to our life. (coughs) Now, there was a time in history that I don't know how much stress actually played in a person's life, but I know as we move more and more into this modern age, my subject is not stress tonight, but I'm just building a platform. Uh, The more and more we go in this modern age that we live in, the stress is greatly increased. And one of the reasons, I think, is because of the speed of communication in the day that we live in because we know everything immediately. I mean, if 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 anything happens, thanks to, uh, uh, you know, Twitter book, Face Space, Insta, Google, or whatever it is it's used, it's on social media. Every, everybody knows it immediately. And the biggest problem with those social media platforms is 99.9% of the time, all of the truth is not told. That's right. Yeah. And so people then begin to build opinions and commentaries and criticisms right. on things that they don't know to be exactly true. Exactly right. Yeah. That's right. And we talk about things being fact checked and different things like that. And it even de- uh, depends on who the fact checker is. Yes. <laughs> now, in our good southern vernacular, somebody says that real fast, and they say fact checker. Well, <laughs> check me off. I'm, I'm good. Uh, I've got plenty to go around if anybody needs any. But, in, but tonight, I want to talk about dealing with disappointment. And I'll tell you, disappointment like this, like like uh, stress or depression, disappointment sometimes can leave you with a permanent emotional scar in your life that God never intended for you to have. Have you ever been disappointed in anybody? And through our scripture, we have that the Apostle Paul at one time was disappointed with John Mark. He did, that, did, that didn't mean he didn't love him. And in fact, later on when he's writing to Timothy, he said, take Mark, take John, take, take Mark, and bring him with you, for he is profitable to me in the ministry. You see, God is a God of second chances, and I'm glad he is. <laughs> and then you, uh, you have many, many other cases. Paul was disappointed in Demas. And Demas never made it back, as far as I know. 
Because he said in writing to Timothy's well, he said, Demas has forsaken me having loved this present world. So disappointment is part of this world that we live in. And the reason tonight I'm teaching or preaching on this is because I don't want disappointment to, to ruin you. I learned early on in the ministry that if, if I was going to let disappointment keep me from the ministry, I would have been out of the ministry before I ever got started in it. And disappointment comes, and you've got to understand, let, write this down if you're taking notes tonight. Disappointment is not fatal. Okay? It's not fatal. And it's not final. And it is fixable. But it happens. So often we complain of disappointments of our hopes and schemes. But I want you to think of this, but disappointments often prove to be blessings and save us from calamity and ruin. Let me repeat that. So often we complain of the disappointment of our hopes and schemes, but disappointments often prove to be blessings and save us from calamity and ruin. Let me give you an example. When I was a young man, in my late teens, early 20s, for a few years, I was away from the Lord. I, I, I regret that. I, I would give anything to go back and change those times. I'm sure that I disappointed people yeah. in those days. To be honest with you, I was running from the Lord. I didn't want to preach. I, I had every excuse. I was backwards, bashful, shy, inept, insecure. All, all of those things. And I, I, I'm running, honestly. And I got, I, I loved, still do like it. I'll never say I love it again, but I, in those days, I thought I loved stock car racing. And we'd go to Dixie Speedway, Sonoy Speedway, and we'd go up to, up the road to Dry Pond, Georgia, and up there, we'd come down here to, to Byron and different places like that. So some buddies and I got together and we was going to build us a race car. We got an old uh, Dodge or whatever it was, Plymouth Super B, whichever one you remember those cars, Michael? Yeah, okay. Was that too far before? Had a 383 Hemi <laughs> engine in it. That thing was big as a land yacht. We knocked all the glass out of it, stripped the interior, welded some old rusty pipe we had inside. It wasn't a roll cage. It wouldn't have held up nothing if that car had ever turned over. And we, we souped up that engine as best we could. You know what souped up means? We souped it up, knocked the exhaust pipe off of it, bought some wheels and tires, spray painted it. With, listen, we painted it with spray paint cans, primary gray, put a number on it and went racing. Dixie Speedway, Woodstock, Georgia. And we, we won an entire racing season. We spent over there. We won enough money to eat at the Waffle House one time on the way to the race One time. I, I know Powder Puff Queen right there. Uh, so, you know, I was, and I was disappointed that we didn't make it in that field. I'm serious, I was. I had dreams, y'all may not know these names, but I was going to be the next Jody Ridley, Buck Simmons. <laughs> you know, Bill Elliott was a teenager racing then. Yeah. You know, I was, I was going to be the next Luther Carter <laughs> and those guys. I mean, Mike Head Moore. just passed away. Some of you might have known him. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we was, we was, and I, I mean, I was disappointed. I was disappointed. Two races, two races. I come in first, last place. In other words, next to last. <laughs> so I was disappointed in that career. But I'm going to tell you what. God was so good to me, Brother Dunn. Yes. That God let a series of events happen that took my desire to do that so far away from me. And brought me to a place where I had to get on my knees and ask God to forgive me. Racing is not a sin. No, it's not. not if you do it on a racetrack. Now, if you do it on a great highway, that's no yeah, issue. That's <laughs> but if you 
if you do it in a race track, it's like, see, it doesn't have to be. It could become one, but it doesn't have to be. But see, I was using it to try to quench the Holy Spirit in my life. Mm-hmm. And God used that disappointment to bring me back to the place that I needed to be with God. That's right. I can tell you more about that story, and I will probably some other time. Some disappointments sometimes are, are those blessings. So tonight in this scripture, you know, all of us at one point in our life have gone through what we call disappointment, things we hope for that did not happen, did not come to fruition, that we did not see it, things we prayed about and they did not come to pass, things that we desired and did not come and then they disappeared. Someone rightly said this, and I don't know who to credit this quote to, said behind the most radiant light, there is often the most bitter trials. And let me say this, in some of the greatest disappointments in life, in some of the greatest trials, some of the greatest things have come. Some of the greatest hymns have been written. Some of the greatest messages that have ever been born in the heart of a preacher have come after that. Some of the greatest books that have ever been written have come after the greatest trials. I think one of the best illustrations uh, of this is the song, No One Ever Cared For Me Like... Jesus said, Dr. Charles Weigel, why I said, if you leave and go out, out preaching one more time, singing one more time, I'll not be here when you come back. And she left him. And a little while after that, he sat down at the piano so broken hearted that he could not stand it. And God gave him the hymn, No One Ever Cared for Me Like Jesus. Amen. And, and so some of those things happen in some of those times in our life. Paul was a man whose life was known for joy and victory and peace, but we think him of, of him as never having to face problems, never having difficulty. He was God's chosen vessel, the man of God, and indeed he was. But Paul met with disappointments, and I'll tell you tonight, when you meet with disappointments, uh, and when they come your way, it may very well be that God has allowed that in your life to redirect your life and your heart or your thinking and to keep you from a calamity that may come later. Yeah, that's good. For but Satan has us to think that we're all by ourselves many times in the matter. Now I'll give you a few points tonight and give you something to think on study on. Number one, the problem he faced here at Paul. In verse seven, he said, at least I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of revelation, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to buffet me. At least I should be exalted above measure. He said, there was given to me. To me. To Paul. Who gave it to him? Who gave him the thorn in the flesh? God did. God gave him the thorn in the flesh. You see, it was a God-given thing. You see the mental suffering that can be involved with disappointment. Paul could have said, God, why did you give this to me? Why me, God? Why have I been so disappointed? And let me tell you tonight, there are people that have been disappointed in marriages. They've been disappointed in their homes. They've been disappointed in their children. They've been disappointed in their church. They've been disappointed with church leaders. They've been disappointed with the world. They've been dis- Anywhere you look tonight, it's available. Yeah, that's right. But Paul said, God gave me this. And I'm sure the questions rolled through his mind more times than once. Why? So why why did he give it? You see, and what was it for? Did you see the mental anguish Paul could ex- it, or I think is experiencing the mental suffering. Lord, why did you give this to me? Lord, why did you give this to me? Lord, what is it for? What's the purpose in it? Why, why do I have to experience this? Why does it have to come? And then there was the physical suffering that was involved with it. And I'll tell you, dis- disappointment can cause you some physical suffering. A thorn in the flesh. You know, tell me, tell me this right quick. What do you think of when you think of a thorn? Not the cross, not the thorn on Christ's head. Now, just the thorn. A rose bush. Huh? A rose, a rose bush. bush. What? Pain. Pain. It hurts. It hurts bad. 
You remember these old wild plum bushes you used to grow around here? We had them up north Georgia too. They had the big old thorns in them. So we went and picked wild plums from my mother to make plum jelly out of it. It was plum good. <laughs> and, and But we went with my granddaddy Brown and he told he said, the boys put your shoes on. Uh -huh. But there's always one that didn't listen. <laughs> I tell you, picking those plums barefooted and stuck a, a thorn. thorn up in my foot. And my guy had to hobble, hold up, crow hop on one leg, get back to the house. And my granddaddy got out there, and he was an old man then. And he said, son, that thorn's got to come out. And he, my grandmama helped, my grandma, grandma, my grandma, Granny Brown, and held me down. And he took a pair of old rusty pliers and pulled that thorn out of my foot. And then Miss Jean, he took and opened up that hole where that thorn went and poured turpentine in my foot. Oh, that's, that's how we got treated back in those days. We didn't, we didn't have no back team. And they wouldn't go into the emergency room, you know. If you got stitched up, more than likely, my grand, granny Browning would have stitched you up and put your sewing through Seriously. Yeah, like Michael did. We didn't even have super glue. And I'll tell you, it was painful. So it, the painful, the thorn in the flesh was painful. Paul had pain when he slept. Most commentators agree that Paul not only had some sort of myopia concerning his eyes, but he also that he had, his, it said his physical appearance, that he more than likely had some kind of, of osteoarthritis or what is it sometimes people get where they draw really bad. And so he had pain when he slept. We know from Scripture that he had pain when he stood. We know that he had pain when he spoke uh, in his language, in, in the writing, and what, you know, the Holy Spirit gave him the words to say, but we see in, in his writing the pain sometimes in Paul's heart because he was disappointed, suffering in the flesh. Pain when he said. And I'll tell you, if you experience chronic pain, you'll get disappointed. Because you seem like you can't get any relief. So there was the mental suffering, the physical suffering, the spiritual suffering. He said the messenger of Satan to Buffett. But that means it was a spiritual attack. And you've got to remember sometimes when you're experiencing disappointment, the devil is going to launch a spiritual attack on you. Right there. Messenger of Satan to Buffett me. Um, and not only was they a messenger from Satan, they was a message from Satan. And the message from Satan is usually is, you don't matter, nobody cares, you're all alone, you brought this on yourself, blah, 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 it goes on. And I think what Satan tries to do is turn everything introspective, because once we do, we start spiraling down that rabbit hole of depression. Yes. So there was a messenger from Satan, a message from Satan. In fact, a masterpiece from Satan. But secondly tonight, I want you to notice the prayers he fulfilled. Look in verse 8. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me. Now Paul sincerely prayed for God to take this away. His prayer was scriptural. If you go back to Matthew chapter 7. And I'm going to go back there right quickly and read it. If you want to turn there, you can. Matthew chapter 7. It look in verse 7 and 8, I think is what I'm looking for. Yes, he said, Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. His, his prayer was scriptural. He was asking, God, remove this thorn from me. We will never, ever have what we don't ask for. But to God be the glory, I'm thankful tonight God does not give me everything I ask for. But I'll tell you, He, he does not give me anything that I don't ask for. I'm glad God hasn't answered all my prayers. Because I'd probably be in prison and cut y'all be in wounded or something. I don't know. But he said, Lord, I'm asking, hear me. 
And I'll tell you, when we are disappointed, we want God to hear us. And your prayers need to be scriptural. His prayer was sincere. If you go over to the book of James, uh, right quick, James chapter 4 and verse 2, you'll see this, James chapter 4 and verse 2. You lust and you have not. You kill and desire to have and cannot attain. You fight and war, yet you have not because you ask not. James 4, 2. His, his prayer was scriptural. He was asking. His prayer was sincere. Lord, I, I'm believing. Lord, help me. His prayer was simple. God, I'm asking you to take this thorn from me. Now, I want to give a shout out tonight. And I, I may get in trouble for using somebody's name because I didn't call or text and get permission to. But my daughter taught me a good bit about prayer. And she learned, she said that she learned it from a friend in college. And I thank God for a good Christian college. Those girls in those dorms would get together every night for prayer group before they ended their day. But she said that she had a prayer. One of her prayer partners in college was a young lady and would pray so specifically. And Sarah said, it convicted me, Dad. And she said, I started trying to pray more specifically. And she said about everything. And we were having this conversation and we were headed out to do some shopping. And I said, so what do you pray for when you head out shopping? She said, I pray for a good parking spot. Yeah. And the Lord gave, gives her one just about every time. She also said this about parking spots. She said they're like men. Parking spots are. The good ones are already taken. The one that's left in handicap. So, but his prayer was simple. His prayer was sincere. His prayer was scriptural. His prayer was specific. And I'm tell you, when you're bad in disappointment, it's okay to tell God I'm disappointed because, and God helped me with this disappointment. You know, we have a little bit of historical record about Demas, but I think Paul did everything in the world to rescue Demas. Yeah. And I think Paul never quit loving John Mark. Yeah. But in his later days, he said, said John Mark. <laughs> that young boy that got I think John Mark got a little discouraged and left on one of the missionary trips. He went back. But he said, bring him, bring him to me. And let me tell you this night. Don't ever get so disappointed in somebody that you cut them off never to have association with them again. Because you remember, they're just their flesh just like you are. You may not can ever trust them again and I can't blame you for that. But Paul found great confidence, I think, in John Mark. He said, bring him to me. Thirdly, I want you to notice the peace he felt. He said, and the Lord said unto me, in verse 9, He said, and he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. My strength is made perfect in weakness most gladly. Now that was the Lord's answer. Paul said, most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest in me. And God gave him this answer. In verse 9, he said, my grace is sufficient for you. Now, I'll tell you, when you're disappointed, whether it's in people or things or events or anywhere else, you need to remember that God's grace is sufficient for you. That's right, it is. And the, the peace he found in this verse, he said, and he said unto me, the Lord has, when, when Paul got this answer, Paul knew God had heard him. And let me tell you tonight, your prayers do not go unheard. And with that in mind, it ought to make you more careful about what you do pray about. Your prayers do not go unheard. The Lord is helping. And when the Lord's answer is better than what I ask for, it is a wise thing to go with the Lord's answer. Paul's desire was the thorn to be removed. God's answer said, my grace is sufficient. And Paul said, you know, you're right. Therefore, 
In my weakness, I'm strong. When I'm weak, I'm strong. Because when Paul was weak, he was kept not on Paul's street, but on God's street. That's right. And the Lord is healing. God never did take the thorn away from Paul. No. But look how God used him. Amen. Yeah. Look how God used him. Fourthly, the pleasure that he fulfilled for Paul's sake. Look at the last part of verse 9. Most gladly, therefore, I rather glory my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest on me. Therefore, I take pleasure. I don't tell you, I don't know that Danny Money could have ever in his life said I take pleasure in infirmities or in reproaches or in necessities or in persecutions or in distresses for Christ's sake. Now he said all this. Now I want you to get this. He said, for Christ's sake. Paul said that if I was doing this for my sake, well, I'm saying it's not Paul. But I'm telling you, if it had been for just Paul's sake, yeah. it would have been difficult to endure it when he was enduring it for Christ's sake. Yeah, it's different. Yeah. He said, I glory in it. Mm. Have you ever, you ever thought that Christ, that what did Peter said that I may know him in the fellowship of his sufferings? How often do we resent suffering? How often do we resent it? True. How seldom do we embrace it? I don't tell you, I don't like suffering. I I don't like it at all. Sister Donna's an expert at it. She has suffered me now for almost 17 years. <laughs> but I, I don't I don't particularly like it. For Paul's sake. And then it was for Christ's sake. Paul said, look at it in the last part, in distress is for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. And I'll tell you, it is for our sake too. Now disappointment now becomes a delight for Paul mentally, physically, and spiritually. Paul's life is changed. And God uses, or did use his suffering to bring glory to God. And when Paul was weakest, Christ became stronger. Not that Christ was not strong to begin with, but it became stronger in Paul's life. Right. And at that point, Christ was seen in his life. You know, the world looks at Christians a lot of times to see how they handle disappointments. That's right. You ever seen a two-year-old get disappointed because they didn't get their ice cream? They do yes. You know, like scoop the idiot. And they get upset with it because they don't get their ice cream. And they go to pitch and fit. And they, they you know, it, they didn't have sprinkles on it or whatever it was. And they kick. You know, how many times do we as so, so, called, so called mature Christians act the same way? Right. When we're disappointed. But when Paul was the weakest, Christ became strong in his life. And at that point, Christ was seen in him. Your suffering, your trials, your pains can be used to bring glory to his name. But I want to tell you, some people think, well, if I'm a Christian, I won't ever have any suffering. I'll never have any disappointment. I'll never have any pain. Nothing can be further from the truth because we live in a fallen world. But we do have the power of God working in us when those things do come along and the world faces all of that and then dies lost and goes to hell. How much worse could it be? Amen. Amen. So we see there is a, a spiritual way of dealing with disappointments. Think of the problem he faced. Think of the prayers he fulfilled. Think of the peace he found. And think of the pleasure he fulfilled. Let me tell you tonight, disappointments are not easy. And they don't get any easier as you grow older. They don't get any easier as you grow in your spiritual walk. But what should grow is your ability to handle them in a Christ-like manner. Amen. I've been so disappointed in some of my preacher friends. I don't know what to do. And a couple of them, Miss G, another, probably who I'm thinking about tonight. 
outside of my pastor probably loved him as much as any preacher I knew. Traveled with him. Roomed with him in hotels and we'd be all preaching. Mm -hmm. And if my if my strength was in him, if my strength my if my walk with Christ was centered in a person, then I've been out of ministry a long time. I have but I let me tell you tonight. I have never, ever been disappointed in Christ. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. I've been disappointed in circumstances. I've been disappointed right. in people. I've been disappointed in events. And I have, there have been times when I thought I was disappointed in Christ. Hear me out. Yeah. But given time, you say I had to say, God, you were so right. Right. And I was so wrong. Yes. And thank you, God, that you didn't let my disappointments bring calamity and ruin. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. Because Christ is our answer. Christ is our rock. And Christ is our strength. Right. Amen. 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 Let's pray. Father, I love you tonight. And I thank you, Lord, more tonight, Lord, than I ever. Because just well, I've had yes. these years to look back over the goodness of God. Lord, through some deep valleys, some fantastic mountaintops. Lord, I, I, I love the mountaintops, Lord, because you get such a view. You see things you won't see anywhere else. But Lord, a lot of times the mountaintops are barren. All but the valleys, Lord. That's where the lily in the valley is. Yes. That's where the, the green pastures are. Hey. That's where the still waters are. Yes. And Lord, I've never felt closer to my shepherd yes. than I was in the valleys. And Lord, I ask you tonight to help us deal with the things that come in our life in a, from a biblical viewpoint. And Lord, dealing with disappointment is one of those. God, help me, I pray, to be an example in my life and my walk. And Lord, I may know that in itself. If you answer that prayer, and you will, we'll probably bring some difficulty and disappointment that people will see out there. Oh, God, help me. I'll never be an apostle Paul. But Lord, if you can use me to help others, use me. And God touch lives, I pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you for listening. I hope it helps you some tonight. Amen. We're going to go through our prayer list right quick. You've got your prayer bulletin for March. I'm not necessarily going to read every name on there, but I'm going to hit some highlights and Brother Malcolm will pray for us. But I do want to give you some things tonight. We are praying, of course, for the Calvin family, the Jackson family, Miss Jean, Sheila, all of the Walker, Gordon family, Sister uh, Pat Pitt, the McBrides, the Barnes family, but also pray for the Castile family. Uh, Brother Bill Castile went home to be with the Lord about 5.30, 6 o'clock this evening. And so you prayed for I never, I want to tell you some faithful, faithful people has one home to the Lord. Brother Castile was as faithful a man as you've ever met in your life. Lived a meager life, but was loving. Still loving. You pray for Miss Friend and the rest of the family. And then pray for Tom and Pat Krillowitz. Brother Tom had to go to the hospital this evening. I don't know if they kept him or not. I haven't got the last word when I come in the building. I have not got the last word from Sister Pat. But they did go to a med stop and from there had gone to the yard. And uh, so we'll see what happens from there. Uh, I don't think it's serious, super serious, but if you go to the hospital now, it's serious. You know, it's not what you go there for, it's what you might catch while you're in there. So you pray that God would not only restore health to Brother Tom, but protect him from anything that may, may, be, in, may be there. Uh, you know, pray for Billy and Rebecca Mitchell, of course, Brother Wayne Pritchard. Got Stevie Seitler, got a good report. We're rejoicing the goodness of the Lord for that. God did answer prayer, and he'll continue to answer prayer. I love Stevie. 
Thank the world of and pray that the Lord will just continue to bless you. And you pray earnestly for him too. But we ought to stop just a minute and say thank you. Raise your hands. Say Amen. thank you, Lord. Amen. God has touched Stevie's side. Amen. 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 Bless, bless his name tonight. Yeah. Pray for our shut-ins, Miss Albritton and her daughter Karen, Robert and Janice Powell. Continue praying for uh, Jerry and Helen Bridges. Uh, some of you may have, since it's on Facebook, I think it's okay to mention, you may have saw a Facebook post from Miss Helen today that gave an address. Brother Jerry loves getting cards and letters. and uh, But listen, it, there's some instruction on there that are very specific. Uh -huh. So make sure you read that. If you don't, well, I'll try to copy that some way or another so that you can read it. But really, he can't get cards. They must be uh, white envelope, white paper, uh, only postage stamp, no any kind of stickers or anything else on it. You can draw on it like a picture, that I believe. I don't know. On that white I, paper. I don't know that. I'm just, check, check, if you do Facebook, check Miss Heaven's post and uh, follow her instructions, not mine. Uh, but we've got, uh, of course, pray for, pray for Tammy Dean, pray for Chris Seth, uh, pray for our uh, missionaries, pray for Sister Angel's brother, pray for Miss Doris Fowler. She was still stable today, awake, and actually been able to eat a little bit. So you pray for Miss Doris, pray and all the things. I know. That's not what no. she's in there mm -hmm. for. Okay. You and uh, pray for. Uh, Pray for Miss Doris Fowler and her family. Pray for Melissa Melton. I understand has not been mm -hmm. feeling well, so pray for her. Uh, and any other prayer requests that we've got quickly? Yes, ma'am. You calling on me? Yes. Okay, I've got three. One is Lacey O'Neill that we met with the cancer down at the ladies' meeting. Mm -hmm. That's Lacey O'Neill. One, Wesley Jackson came home yesterday. And I was going to okay, I don't remember the other one. Maybe it was I was going to remember to, if they can say it before I did. Melissa, Rick, Missy, her, her, and um, she's having and just, surgery. Just an update on Marcy. She she's doing well with her cancer as well, but got she got a good report. But and she got a cast finally on her wrist. She's thanking the Lord for that. Yeah, do pray for Marcy Hall. Huh? Yes, ma'am, Miss Brother Danny, I know y'all asked prayer for us, but today our service truck tore up. Oh, my goodness. Oh, so my. I think it's going to be something major. Service truck. All right, Miss Jean, we will. We will. My goodness. All right. Any others? Brooke, do you have something? Well, just uh, uh, for, for my family. Lost, that we can help them to know the Lord. Amen. 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 Is in the process of resigning his church. Nothing bad. He's just health and age. And he and uh, Sister Jen are going to be moving to North Carolina, states of North Carolina mm -hmm. uh, area, Jacksonville area. Right? Where is Kepler G? What? Oh no, Jacksonville. Jacksonville. Right on the coast. Yeah, their their son-in-law Peter is uh, re has retired from the Marine Corps and uh, got a place up there for brother and sister Sal. And they're going to be moving up there, which is going to be, I hate to see Brother Jim go mm -hmm. and Miss Jan. They've been friends since I've been here, but they're wonderful people. Yes. Where was moving. his church? I forgot. Northside Baptist Church in Dublin, Georgia. Right. And he's been there 20 years. All right, any others? Professor Allen, yes. um, they think now that what his symptoms that he's having is from the uh, coronavirus, uh, COVID virus. They, they said that um, his 
don't ask me why, but they said his last blood test showed that he had the antibodies of COVID. Mm. He hasn't been sick. If he's had it, he didn't know it. Um, although back in October, he had uh, bronchitis. And it's strange, but that's when his headache started. So the doctor said that uh, this could last three months, six months, eight months. They don't know. Oh. And um, he's going to leave um, on the 22nd. He's going down to uh, Jacksonville to the Mayo Clinic. And they're going to run tests and do, I think they got about four doctors that's going to see him there and see what they can come up with, but um, he did have some Botox shots uh, for his headaches, but he said it helped, but it didn't stop him. So okay. he's he's really having a time with this. All right, we'll pray for Adam. Adam Watson. Yes, ma'am. I have an unspoken request for tomorrow morning at 11.30. Okay. Please, if you don't mind, I really would appreciate. Now this is this is really important. If you don't mind, please make sure that you pray for that, because of the nature of it can't be discussed. But it's important you pray for it, Brother Melton. If you would uh, start to say Santa, wake him up so we can pray. No, I'm kidding, <laughs> <laughs> Brother Melton. If you, Brother Dottie, I'm sorry. I, I <laughs> you want me to wake up? <laughs> 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 oh, Brother Donnie, I love you. Thank you, Lord, for you. Father, we do thank you, Lord, for loving us. We do thank you, Lord, in all of our trials and disappointments. You're always there for us. And always, yes. Lord, to supply our needs and encourage us and help us. Father, we pray for these families that's lost loved ones. Uh, Father, especially for uh, the Castile family, Lord, we sure love Brother Bill. And probably going to miss him, but Lord, we just thank you for the humble servant that he was, the blessings he was. Father, for Brother Tom and his past, I pray especially for them. I pray Brother Tom will be uh, more okay and I do things serious for him. For the Mitchell family, Billy and Rebecca, Father, we pray especially for them. Thank you for all you have done and ask you to continue to bless and help them. Father, we just want to praise you for a good report back on Steve's side. Yes. Father, I, I, we've been praying, Lord, you touch him and heal him. And Father, you have really helped him. We're encouraged by that. And thank yes, you, thank you, Father. For all you know. Lord, for our shut ins, and the Lord just especially bless them, Father, who cannot give out. And Father, just touch them and strengthen them. Father, I pray for the Bridges family. I pray for Mr. Uh, my brother Jerry, Father. Lord, for Mr. Uh, Bridges as well, Father, that you'd be with them and encourage them at this time. Father, we uh, pray for Miss Tammy and pray for Dean. Lord, we certainly know the needs. Father, for the missionaries. We thank you for all of our missionaries. We especially pray for them. Lord, uh, they're going through what we're going through with the COVID, Father. But they're going through it with a more primitive, most of them, situation. So we pray especially for them. Father, for Miss Angel's brother, the special prayer request needs that he has. And for Miss Angel and her family, Father, we miss them. Understand why they cannot come. I'm sure look forward to the time we can worship with them again. Father, I do thank you, Miss Fowler has seemed to improve some. Lord, we love her, fine Christian yes. lady, Lord. Uh, not a member of this church, but certainly part of this church, part of our church family in the sense of the word. Father, uh, what a blessing she's been. Father, yes. I pray for the Missy as Lord, uh, she is uh, Father, trying to get ready for uh, a medical procedure, but also has a problem, Father. We just pray you touch her and heal her. Yes, Father, I, I pray for Lacey O'Neill that was mentioned. Father, I believe had cancer. I pray you touch her. For Marcy Hall, Father, we thank you for letting us come to know her, Lord, through the high services online. We bless that being, and we pray that you, you touch her in heaven. Father, I pray for Miss Jean and the business, and Father, for the Lord and family. Pray, Lord, you bless me and help me. Lord, I pray for Miss Brooks' family, Lord, the family member, Father, that's concerned upon her heart. Pray you touch them. Father, for Brother Jim South, as he prepares to move, and Father, we certainly have the privilege to meet him back. Father, 1981, when our children went to school in Gilead, so we've known him a long time. He's a good brother. Yes. We pray, Lord, you'll be with you. Father, I pray for Adam as Lord, he tries to recover from these headaches. Father, you know all about yes. it. You know the doctor's not exactly sure. Uh, kind of associated yes. with the virus. 
Father, I pray you just touch it, Lord. Those headaches will go away. What a blessing that would be. And then, Father, Miss Pam has an unspoken request concerning uh, something that's going to take place at 11 o'clock tomorrow. You know all about it. Yes. Father, I pray you'll work in it. And Lord, bless uh, them, but bless uh, Lord and glorify yourself. Father, bless our pastor and his family. Bless each of these church members. Father, for our missionaries and for our youth ministry. Lord, we just thank you for all you do in Jesus' name. Yes, Amen. Lord. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Hope it was a blessing to you tonight. Tell somebody you love them before you leave. I love you, Brother Dan. I think right smart than you too. <laughs> I don't...